<laughs> Good morning, y'all. This is your old mountain doctor, Doc Holland, with another in my series of videos that I'm calling Appalachia Before Dawn. Now, I have to be real honest with you and tell you, if you haven't noticed, I'm inside. I'm in my office right now, and uh, it's just real cold outside. It's 31, 32 degrees. And I just thought about going out and maybe firing up the propane fire pit that I have. But you know, it's Thanksgiving morning. It's about 10 minutes until four. Yes, I get up way too early. And yes, I know most of you are going to be going to be asleep for several hours, except for maybe some of y'all that are making Thanksgiving dinner. But I wanted to come and talk to you for a while. I haven't done one for a while because I had me a sinus infection. Lasted almost two months. I tried everything. Tried kerosene enema. Tried going to the gas station and using the air hose to blow in one side and out the other and one of those neti pots, nothing worked. I took took a couple rounds of antibiotics and was hoarse to the point that I almost couldn't be understood. And uh, actually had to end up going to an ENT. And he looked around, made sure everything was okay. It was I was finally over the sinus infection. But um, he was concerned about my voice. So he's going to have me doing some some PT type of things on my voice through the the month of January, but I felt like this morning that I could talk to you just a little bit, but didn't want to do it outside because the cold would probably affect my voice a little bit more than I want it to, as I tell you a, a family story. My my folks are all from the mountains, and and my folks are all poor. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you a story about a Dutch oven this morning. It's a story about my mama and, and my daddy and uh, my grandma on my mama's sides in that story. It's a series of stories, I reckon, because a couple years ago after my daddy died, he died 18 years ago in May, this past May. And for many, many years before Daddy died, Mama would always roast her turkey in this big old pot, this, this big old Dutch oven thing. It was a long Dutch oven. It made mighty fine, mighty fine roast turkeys. And, and uh, when I was a little boy, uh, sometimes we'd go to my grandma Jeffrey's house, my, my grandma on my mama's side, and sometimes we'd stay at home. But sometimes we'd go to my Aunt Geneva's, my... Uh, my mama's sister's house on occasion for Thanksgiving. But when mama made turkey, she always made it in this big old, big old Dutch oven, long Dutch oven. And I said for years after Oma Darlin and I got married, I told mama, I said, now, when you start giving away stuff and you decide you don't want stuff, what I want you to do is I want you to give me that Dutch oven because she would make turkeys in it. She would make hams in it. That, oh, and she made Coca-Cola hams. Oh, my, oh, my. And she would make pot roast in it. Anything she made in that was good. It was what she called a waterless Dutch oven. Now, when I was a little bitty boy, she had a full set of these waterless pots. My, my friend Tim actually told me he used to sell those things. Well, I don't know why it was waterless. I don't know that she ever did that. But, needless to say, she had this thing, and I said, Mama, one of these days, that's my inheritance right there, and, and bless her heart, my mama didn't, didn't know the meaning of a, of a dollar being saved. She, she could spend better than anybody, so when me and my brother actually went through her estate, there weren't a whole lot left other than that Dutch oven and, and a few other things, but... Uh, not too long after after Daddy died, Oma Darlin and I were over at my mama's house at her condo, and uh, she went into the kitchen, and she came out with that Dutch oven, and she gave it to me. She said, I want you to have your inheritance so you can enjoy it, and you can have me over and, 
and I can enjoy it. And I said, well, I'll do that. And she'd already taught me how to make, how to make the Coca-Cola hams. I said, okay, thank you. I hugged her and told her I really appreciated it. And I did it. It meant a lot. I'm having, by the way, I'm having my coffee with, um, with pumpkin spice creamer in it this morning. Uh, I like pumpkin spice creamer. Don't like much else with pumpkin spice. Love pumpkin pie and, and, and so on. But so I said, well, thank you, mama. Thank you. And, and, uh, I got to tell you, you know, uh, I was I was writing yesterday on Facebook and I wrote about Thanksgiving meals and you know, we always had for Thanksgiving we always had a turkey that mama fixed. She roasted in there and we always had with it oh my, I haven't had it in years cuz my family don't care much for oyster dressing, but we always had oyster dressing inside of the bird. I think that always makes it moister. And Mama would fix sweet tater casserole with the pecans on the top, you know, brown sugar and pecans. And she would make mashed taters, real mashed taters, and then she would make turkey gravy from from stuff. And she'd use the giblets, just chop up the, the liver and the gizzard and the heart and, and throw them in that gravy. And we'd have always have green beans, and she'd always put a ham hock in there. And Daddy liked cranberry sauce not the kind I like with the little cranberries in it not the homemade kind that my grandma Jeffries used to make where she had cranberries chopped up in orange juice and sugar and and little tiny pieces of oranges or something in there <clears throat> not that kind he liked the kind that was just a big old can shaped hunk of cranberry jelly he loved that mama would slice it he liked it sliced not chopped up or nothing. Mama, she would fix it sliced. And, and uh, Mama would make biscuits because Daddy liked biscuits. He wasn't a big fan of yeast rolls. He liked biscuits with his Thanksgiving dinner. Anyways, <clears throat> that next year, I don't remember if it was for Easter or what, <clears throat> but we decided that we'd have a ham. And I called Mama up and I said, Mama, I need to come over, me and Oma Darling, and you need to tell me, remind me how to make a, a ham in the in the inheritance pot. And she said, okay. And we went over and I had a piece of paper and a pen and she said, you know, I got to tell you about that pot and about the set. I remember the set. It was it was the, the big Dutch oven and three or four smaller pots and a frying pan. <clears throat> well, she said, before I was born, my grandma Jeffries, her mama, had this cooking thing at her house. It's a fella coming in, and, and he came in, and he fixed a meal with this waterless cookware. And you could come, and you could watch him make it, and he would explain to you how he made it, and, and then you'd sample everything. And they do this sometimes even at flea markets. You've seen people do it with different knives and different things. Well, he was doing it to sell you a set of these daggone waterless cookware pots. So Daddy knew about it. It was on a Saturday, and... Daddy worked second shift, so he was just thrilled at the chance for Mama to get gone. This is before I I was born, before my little brother was born, so he could sleep in. So Mama had learned to drive, and she drove over to my, my grandma's house. <clears throat> before she left, though, the night before, my daddy said, Now listen, we don't have the money for you to go and buy a set of them things on installment. We don't do no loans. We don't do no credits. And you ain't going to buy that on installment because that's credit. And we ain't going to do that. And she said, okay, Jim, I won't do that. He said, now, Livy, I'm serious. Because he knew Mama Olivia was her name. He called her Livy. Well, sometimes he called her Butch because he couldn't say Olivia. He said, now, I'm serious, old woman. I don't want you buying those things on credit because that's what this is all about. And she said, I won't, I won't. <clears throat> so she went over to grandma's and, oh, that fella, 
put on the dog. He made all kinds of different things in those pots. He put them on grandma's stove, put something in the oven in that in that big old big old pot that I actually ended up inheriting. Man, oh man, oh man. Mama tells me later on as she's explaining about that that Dutch oven to us before she tells us how to make the, the ham. Oh, it was good. It was so good. And and I knew that uh, that your daddy would be mad, she said. And I didn't order anything because you have to order it and they ship it to you. You give one payment, they ship it to you, and then you pay every month so much. And it is credit and there is interest on it. Not a whole lot, she didn't think, but there was interest on it. So she goes home. Daddy is up and out in the yard doing some mowing. He comes in. And he sees the brochure that that man had left with everybody, with his name and contact information. Back then, Mom and Daddy didn't have a telephone before I was born. They didn't have a telephone until I was probably seven, eight, nine, ten years old. I don't know. And uh, Daddy gets mad, and he said, "I thought I told you. I told you." Not, <clears throat> we didn't do no things on credit. And she said, Jim, Jim, Jim. And daddy didn't listen. He stormed out the door. And he drove over to my grandma Jeffrey's house. And he went in and that fellow was still there. And he said, hey, listen, I'm Livia Holland's husband. We ain't going to do no credit. And the man just kind of stood there. And he says, how much are those things if you buy them outright? And the fellow told him. <clears throat> it was a lot of money. It was over $100. I don't remember how much it was. Mama might have told me, but I don't remember what she said. Well, Daddy reached in his wallet. My Daddy always kept two or three hundred dollars in his wallet all the time. He did because there weren't banks open, and and you know there might be a need to go somewhere to do something and have cash on hand. So he kept a wad of twenty dollar bills, usually two hundred, three hundred dollars. Well, he reached into his wallet. And he took it out. He said, you got change. And the fellow says, I can make change. He said, you got one of them boxes of pots here. And the fellow says, I got an extra one out in my, out in my trunk. But, you know, you can, you can get them a piece at a time, you know, if you want on, on, uh, on credit. And no, 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 my daddy said, we ain't going to do that. So daddy paid him, guy gave him change, went out to the car and got in the trunk of the car and got a brand new box, the whole thing. And what the box was, the box was actually one of the sample kits that he used to, to show off and everything that he had, hadn't been opened because a lot of times folks, as they would do it on credit, they'd get it a piece at a time or, or if they put a big down payment, they'd get the whole thing and then pay it on credit. Daddy took it home. <laughs> And Mama, Mama kind of laughed. She said, and he came in and he thumped that down on the kitchen table and he said, here you are. Now, we don't do stuff on credit. This is your birthday. This is our anniversary. This is Christmas and Fourth of July. <coughs> Mama was quiet. And then she said, I didn't buy nothing. I didn't get nothing on credit. That was just his brochure. Daddy was just furious that he had not paid attention. Mom had tried to tell him before he left, but he was just mad as a hornet. Well, him and Mama got in the car, put that pot in the back pot box in the back seat, drove back over to Grandma's, and the fellow was long gone. Nobody had any telephones. He didn't have any telephone. He had an address that you could write to. So Mama got her pots. Daddy groused about it, and he's all upset about it, but he knew that he was in the wrong. And Mama laughed that day as she told that story to me and Oma Darling. And she explained to us how to make a Coca-Cola ham. I said, okay, and we went home. And a day or two later, I got out my inheritance pot, that, that big old Dutch oven, and had this big old ham we was going to have with with our youngins and and some of her family. And like I said, I don't remember what holiday it was. It was a holiday. And and I, I cut the end off like you're supposed to do. And then I got a can of Coca-Cola, one can of Coca-Cola, and, and put a little bit of brown sugar on the top of the ham. 
and I poured that Coca-Cola real slow over that brown sugar, put a little bit more on there because it melted too much, and then put it in the oven on low heat because you cook it real slow in this in, in this uh, this waterless Dutch oven. And it's cooking in a time or two. I check on it. And the little handle on the top had broke off. Yeah, I got bedhead. You'll have to excuse me. I'll, I'll look a little bit better later in this year day. But uh, mama had it broken off years before. So I had a little bitty pair of vice grips that I would use. And I would, when I take the lid off, I would just clamp the vice grips on the little screw type thing, a bolt type thing that came up through the, through the lid of that Dutch oven, and I would do that, and I'd check, and Elma Darlin checked for me one time, and she came back, and she said, Steve, why do you cut the end off like that? I said, you're supposed to, if you remember, you know, Mom gave us the recipe, you're supposed to cut the end off, and uh, she said, well, why? I said, you know, I don't know. It's just how Mama did it. Well, we were busy getting other things ready for for that holiday dinner so that all the family could eat together. Oh, it was good. We we had good food. I you know, my secret recipe that I don't share with anybody is my green bean recipe. My my nieces uh were here. We had our Thanksgiving this past Saturday, and my nieces were here, uh Oma Darlin's sister's daughters, and they wanted to know my recipe. I've given them recipes for other stuff, and, and Oma Darlin has too, and I told them I can't do that. It's a secret recipe, my own secret. The only thing I fix that's secret, I fried turkeys, been frying turkeys for 25 years, and I fried turkeys the other day for that Thanksgiving, early Thanksgiving get-together, but I told them it, it's a family secret. I can't tell you that. They work for the federal government over to Wright Patterson Air Force Base and, and, and our daughter Morgan, who lives with us with our, our twin grandbabies and, and the two of them and my sister in law actually and, and, and even Oma Darlin before she retired, they all had clearances, top secret clearances and all, and I says, just like your top secret clearance, I can't tell you. And one of them piped up and said, Cause then you'll have to kill us and I said, I Ain't saying that, but anyways, um, uh, after we had that wonderful dinner, whatever holiday it was, Oma Darlin and I was going somewhere and was talking, and she said, now why? Why is it that you cut the end off that ham when you make a Coca-Cola ham? And I said, I don't know. I just know Mama did, and she said she did. And I, I said, well, I have to ask her. She said, well, let's do so. Next time we was over to Mama's condo, <clears throat> I said, Mama, why do you cut the end off of the ham when you make a Coca-Cola ham? And Mama said, well, I don't know. That's just the way I was taught. That's the way your grandma did it. And I said, that's the way she did it? Yeah, yeah, that's the way she did it. So I called up a day or two later, I called up my Aunt Geneva and who's a couple years older than my mom, and I said, Aunt Geneva, I made us a Coca-Cola ham for the family gathering the other day, and and I cut the end of it off like like Mama said you're supposed to, and she said Grandma, uh, Grandma always did that, and, and it was Grandma's recipe. Do you know why you cut the end off? And Aunt Geneva says, I don't know, maybe to absorb the Coca-Cola better. I don't know. It's a big bone-in ham, just a big ham, because there's going to be a lot of people, not no butt-end ham. <laughs> Nothing like that. She said, you'll have to ask your grandma Jeffries. And I said, well, I'll do that. So uh, a while later, me and Oma Darlin, we were visiting Grandma Jeffries. And we were talking around and visiting. And I said, Grandma, I got a big question for you. Why, when you make a Coca-Cola ham, do you cut the butt end off? Grandma said, I don't know said, my mom always did that. And uh, I said, your mom always did that? Well, of course, my great-grandma was gone. She'd been gone for a long time. She said, Lord, no, I, I don't know. But you know, my Aunt Grace is still alive. And, and she lives down in Miamisburg. 
maybe you can ask her. Maybe I can take you. Now, her Aunt Grace was in her 90s because Grandma was old. In her seven, late 70s. So, uh, a while later, me and Oma Darling picked up Grandma Jeffries, and we went to see my great aunt Grace. She was a Shingleton. That's that was my grandma's maiden name, and uh, Aunt Grace was a, a an aunt by marriage, don't you know? So we visited around a little bit, and Grandma introduced us to Aunt Grace, and <clears throat> Aunt Grace still had her mind about her. She didn't get around real good. She's thin as a rail. And her husband had worked for NCR, don't you know, and, and had a big job for NCR and lived over in Oakwood, which is a real nice part of Dayton, real nice part of Dayton. But by this time, she had moved down to Miamisburg after her husband died. And we, we talked a little bit, and she offered us some cookies and made some coffee, and we're sipping on coffee, me and me and Oma Darlin' and Grandma Jeffries. <clears throat> And I said, Aunt Grace, I have a question for you. I've asked my mama. I've asked my grandma here. And, and they don't know the answer to this. But when we make a ham, now we make a Coca-Cola ham. And Aunt Grace, great Aunt Grace, knew exactly what a Coca-Cola ham was. She said she didn't care much for it. Uh, she made hers with pineapple and with brown sugar and little cloves stuck in it. I said, do you, do you cut the end off? And, and she says, well, I do. And I, I said, well, <clears throat> great aunt Grace, why when, if, if you're not making Coca-Cola ham, if you're making a traditional style ham with the pineapple stuck on it and little cherries, maraschino cherries stuck on it and the brown sugar and the little cloves and all, why do you cut the end off? And she sat there for a minute and you could tell she's in her nineties and you could tell she's pondering. And then she laughed and she said to my grandma, whose name was Alma. She said, Alma Beth, you really don't know why we cut the end off. And grandma said, no, Aunt Grace, I have no idea. I figured it's so that the Coca-Cola would be absorbed better. <laughs> Aunt Grace just let <laughs> she rocked back in her rocker. She said, "No, Lord, no, youngins." She's from Kentucky, just like everybody else <clears throat> in my family. Lord, no, youngins. That's not why we do that. And Grandma said, "It ain't." And I said, "It ain't." And then Oma Darlin said, "It's not." And Aunt Grace says, oh, Lord, no. You want to know why we always cut the end off? Because her family learned it from Grandma's grandma. Because <clears throat> Grandma's grandma didn't have a pot big enough to put a whole ham in. So she had to cut the end off so that the pot and the ham fit together. Because the whole ham was too big for her pot. So she always cut the end off. And then Aunt Grace and, and the great aunts and Grandma's mama always cut the end off to make room. And when they got bigger pots, they all still cut the end off. So you know, even when I make a Coca-Cola ham, I, I have that big old waterless, big old cooker there, that Dutch oven. Don't do it every time, but now and again. Just remember Mama and Grandma Jeffries. <clears throat> and even to remember Great Aunt Grace. I get me a big old knife, and I cut that end off. Put the brown sugar on the top, pour that can of Coca-Cola over it, and smile. Because it is on Thanksgiving and every other day, all about the mountains and all about family. So with that, this is your old mountain doctor, Doc Holland, telling you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. It's after 
four by now. And I don't know exactly what time it is. I won't be po the 407. I won't be posting this for a little while. Got to upload it onto YouTube. But I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I will. I'm blessed. We're we're not having our, our little bitty family Thanksgiving with me and Oma Darlin today and, and the twins. We'll have that on Saturday. Because Oma Darlin has to spend the day today with her mama, who's still alive, has Alzheimer's. <laughs> so that the caregivers that stay with her mama can spend time with their family. And then tomorrow, Oma Darlin' and Morgan are going downtown Dayton to see uh, the Legally Blonde musical down at the Schuster Center. And I'll be with the twins. We'll have a grand time because they love their papa, and papa lets them get by with things that mama and nana don't let them get by with. And then Saturday... We're going to have another little bitty old Thanksgiving just for our little immediate family. I'm going to fry a turkey breast. And you know what I got? I've never done before. I got two Cornish hens. I'm going to marinate those in the same injection sauce I'm going to inject the turkey breast with. It only takes 10 or so, 12 minutes to fry a Cornish hen. So we're going to fry the turkey breast because I've been frying turkeys for 25 years now. And we're going to fry those two little old corner shins. I'm excited about that. I'll have to come back and do a little video and show you how that works. So for now, this is the Old Mountain Doc, Doc Holland, telling you Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family, because I know I will.